Well, hello, everyone. We are back with our amazing social studies consultant, the one and only Sam Davidson, who uh, was with us last time showing us all these amazing free educational tours inside of Google Earth Voyager. But today, Sam, you are going to help us make our textbooks even better. You're going to help us get rid of classroom brochures. You're going to take us through a creation tool that we can all use with no technical experience. Yeah, yeah, so, so I'm, I'm really, really excited, excited to actually jump, jump into uh, my creation or new projects where I'm going to help you to create your very own social studies projects. Now, I know teachers are spending a tremendous amount of time on slides, on making sure that we've got visuals on top of the text with the students, but this way we can really enhance those kind of images. Our ELL students are going to really be able to explore and engage as well as all of the other students in the classroom, and it's really going to hope to bring the textbook to life a little bit more, right? And hopefully save some teacher time with making slides and looking for the perfect images all the time. So let's get right into it. I'm really excited. So it's gonna be fantastic. So today we are going to, again, go back to our Google Earth experience here. This is the landing page. This is where we start. This is kind of when you go to Google Earth, you'll have all of those options. Remember from last time, we went over to the little captain sailor boat wheel over here to kind of set us up for Google Voyager. But this time we're gonna click on the Google Maps icon. So, and this goes right to projects. And it's fantastic when it goes in here. What I love about the projects is it links directly to Google Drive. It allows you to save into Google Drive. And again, for our next video, our students can even save into Google Drive. And you can share your projects with each other really easily. So it's still a collaborative piece. So if you're working with uh, a teammate next door, you're working with another teacher, or you just want another opinion on your Google mm. uh, project, you can again share it with teachers. So we can still have fully collaborative projects because of Google, because Google sharing is Google sharing. Sharing. So I love that you said this is all connected in your Google Drive. It'll follow you from Chromebook to Chromebook. But uh, you're actually going to show us like a teacher created project. Where would I even start with a teacher project though? What am I using as my anchor to even to sort of bring something to life? What am I looking at first? So one of the things that I would recommend if this is your first project, we kind of want to think about where can I start? What's something easy I can work with? And so for myself, when I started, I actually just pulled up an example from a textbook. So when I'm working with, per, for example, a grade three textbook, I can go into and create a quality of life in Peru. But let's go ahead and look at the actual textbook. So the textbook gives us an amazing resource to just kind of start our journey. We're going to follow Maria's journey just like I would when I'm reading aloud to my students or having them read with a partner. But we're going to have Maria's journey now explored through Google Earth, which is fantastic. So as a teacher, my strategy is going to be I'm going to go through, read through this information, and I'm going to pick certain locations that I think my students would benefit from kind of enhancing that experience and engaging a little bit deeper in. So of course with Maria, she's uh, a, a young girl living in Peru, so I would obviously start my journey in Peru. So when I go to create my project over here, I'm going to go, okay, I've got a new project. I'm going to create my project in my Google Drive, which is amazing that it kind of saves there, I thought for myself. And then right away I'm going to edit, so I'm going to click the little pencil and then I'm going to edit. I want to title this project whatever it is that I'm working on. So for example, the one that we're doing today is going to be focusing on quality of life in Peru. And then I've got this built and I can add my description. You can add in your learning intentions here. You could add in success criteria here. Whatever you would add in your own kind of slides that you would have created for this, you can write your description in here. So I'm just gonna put today, we are going to follow the journey of Maria. And I love seeing this right now. I'm already seeing some recognizable things. So I'm seeing that this is auto saved. So every keystroke change I make, it's saved in my Google Drive. I'm also already seeing, like you told us, that very familiar share button where I can add a collaborator right here when I'm making my project. You can click that, you can add a collaborator just like we always would with any of the other Google tools. Yeah, so it's, again, it's very user-friendly. It's something we as teachers recognize and have been using 
for you know at least the last year and a half <laughs> what's been going on so uh it's very user friendly and it's it's not a tool that takes a long time to engage in it's just figuring out well what do i want to showcase and again if we use a resource we already have and not start from scratch or reinvent the wheel every time then we can build from there so okay. now i've got my title and a little description like i said if you want to put learning intentions and success criteria here always a great idea and i knew that i wanted to start my journey with kind of a geographic regional photo of Peru. So I'm going to go new feature. So these are new features. These are all the things I can potentially add to a project. So all these things I see here, that's what I will be able to put in my, my journey, my experience. Exactly. So I love to search to add the place. And I, I love also that you even have some other features that kind of encourage you to embed there. Um, but you can go here. And I'm just going to start with Peru. Just want this basic kind of image of Peru. And so then now I've got this area kind of, I guess, Love it. Ordered, that's the word I'm looking for, of, of this whole region, right? And so that's what's really great. Now, as a teacher, what I'm going to do if I want to add this to my project, I just go over here to the right-hand side, the bottom of where the, the image and description of what Google has already created for me. I can click Add to Project. And so as you can see, it goes right away into my project on the far left side here. And what I love is as a teacher, I would use little visual icons for myself and my slides to remind me what I wanted to say or if this had something in particular. So I can change up the little pin or the place marker to suit what I wanted to talk about, right? So again, that's one of those things that as teachers, you can edit and you can change depending on what it is that you're trying to work on. But one of the most, I think, important parts about Google uh, projects is instead of just having that standard Peru image with the Wikipedia version of what Peru is about, mm -hmm. I need to now focus this on Maria or my social studies. So I can go ahead and click that replace. Right away, it gives me an opportunity to replace my image here and to type in my own text. And I mean, this is your slides coming to life right here, right? So instead of spending time, I'm going to crop this picture, then I'm going to move it to my slides. This is an interactive slideshow ready made for you to use in your classroom that you're going to use. And so you, you can edit this in any way that you like. So if I want to embed an image here. I click the little camera and again, very familiar sites, I'm sure for most teachers here of what we're seeing, we have our Google image search, search. we have YouTube, so we can embed a YouTube video right Fantastic. here like we would in our slides, right? So you're like, oh, I've been using this amazing Peru video for years and it's in my slides. Just copy that and put it right in here, <laughs> right? It's just bringing it to life. So not only do they have the ge geographical thinking embedded, now you can embed the visuals from your images, from your videos as well. You you can pull something from your Google Drive. So guess what? You can pull the slides right from your Google right. Drive. Right. already embedded in here for you, right? So, and then of course, if you've traveled to these places and you have your own pictures, how amazing would it be for the students to see your experiences so you could put your own photos? So for this purpose, I'm just gonna Google image search Peru because this is our very first kind of opening. So what, what do I wanna showcase? What are my learning intentions? So again, for myself, this is about quality of life. So I'm actually gonna put in some images to some people now. I know that when we Google search, when we're using the, the embedded Google search, it gives us all of the images that are we're able to use. That's right, Trish, right? Absolutely, Creative Commons, copyright free images for education. So we don't have to worry about usage rights when you use the search tool embedded in Google. Perfect. So that's why I always love it. I know that they're safe and easy to use and I pick that one. And so now that becomes the initial image that my students will see when I take them on the Voyager. And so here I can type in um, whatever I want to do. So Maria, and I could take it right from the textbook if I wanted. I can embed whatever, right? Yeah. What a great chance, though, for students yeah. to summarize their understanding, like or, or us to help model summarizing information from a textbook for our students as we're putting this together. This is great because I know uh, teachers, you're showing teachers creating these, but we could also co-create with our students almost to model what they're about to do independently, right? What a fantastic idea, Trish. Yeah, that would be a great model, even moving forward to eventually get to what our third video is going to be, where our students are building these. So it would be a great idea to build some of these with your students to determine what's most important from the textbook. What are the facts I need to get out or what, you know what I mean? I think that that's a really great 
idea to co-create these instead of doing all the work ourselves. Sometimes right. we, we work hard and, and not, not always the, the smartest way. So that would be a great addition. So now let's say I'm finished over here with this is just what I want for my first kind of um, place marker. And I've put in a little description here. I don't look for a button. I don't have to look for uh, any of those things. I just simply go back. Back love it. I've already got my first thing here and it's created and I love that and it's right there. So now I'm going to go to the textbook again and I know that she lives in a town called Villa El Salvador and I want my students to experience where she lives. So I go back to Google Earth, back to this Google Earth and I'm going to click search to add a place and then I'm going to put in the village that she lives in that is directly quoted again in the textbook. So again, I, I don't have to do a lot of the thinking on my own and right there I have a place marker to the town right here as we're zooming in imagine the conversation pieces with our classes right imagine okay so it's coastal what does that mean what kind of resources, mm -hmm. natural resources is she going to be exposed to how far is it from a major city right all of these things just from this one image and I haven't even added it to my project yet so again I'm going to go ahead and click add to project and then I can replace the image. Now, again, they give us a lovely description in the textbook that she lives in a home made of cement and brick. Mm -hmm. Right here, I'm like, okay, this is the type of home that she, that her father built. So in Google Earth, when I go to replace that image, I can type in uh, uh, Peruvian homes, cement and brick. What a great way to use visual cues, context cues from photos to help us do research. That's such a great strategy. Yeah, and then I'm here and as a teacher, again, if I'm making this prior to students' experiences or along with the students, we can talk about the different homes. We can talk about which one fits the description, which one do you think would work best? And then we're going to pick one and insert that into our video or sorry, into our project. And now we can add in, she lives in a home built by her father, made of cement and brick. This is great. And I'm noticing a few things on here. I can have multiple photos or videos that are part of my project. So there can be several that are there. I love that we can go ahead and, and, and find other ones. We can do some comparatives between, say, urban and rural, talk about homes. And I noticed you had said before about being able to change our place marker. I'm starting to think as a teacher, too, I could have a place marker for food, one for culture, one for home, one for industry. Like, there's so many of the different ones that we can do, and we can change the colors of those pins. This is great. Yeah, so again, if we want to change, for example, this is a home, so we click on the home place marker, and let's make that a certain color. Let's make those ones yellow, for example, to help stand out, right? So now we've got our different yellow marker in the town and the home that she lives in. And so, again, there's so many different ways we can kind of build and look at different things in here, and I love all the, the creativity as a teacher with it. I can be really creative. Um, but then what's even easier is when I go to demonstrate this to my class, I simply press present. Oh, wow. And yeah, and so now I'm ready to teach or I've taught this with my students. And here is all of my information. Here's what I've created for them. And so we've got, again, the image, we've got the visual, we've got a little bit of text, then we've got the mapping here. And which, again, this experience for our students is going to be so, so engaging for them. They're going to love zooming in. They're still going to be able to click the street view. Yeah. Right away, if they're like, well, what about this? What about that? Well, I can go closer and I can drop my, my street view person in here. And so again, it can be organic, right? It doesn't have to be, this is what I've created and this is, this is the path that we're living in. Our students can help us to create some of the content as well. I just drop my person in there and then now we're exploring a certain areas of Maria's village, right? So allowing it to be alive and work with your students inquiry and curiosity is is going to be one of those great things and then i just kind of go back and i'm back to my experience right and then i can go to the next place which again we chose to be her home we've got a couple images so it's going to give us this nice little film kind of strip of cross here of different images you can put in more you can put in videos from here and again i can still click my street view and anything that's blue I can go in and explore a little little bit deeper with my students. And again, their excitement as soon as we kind of zoom in is just yeah. so engaging for them. So we're now looking at her village. This is where Maria, right from the textbook, 
tells us she's living, right? We can experience some of these. We could talk about quality of life. What are we seeing? What are we thinking? What are we wondering about these environments? What natural resources do we see in the buildings and in our world around us from this perspective? Because our students, again, especially in this last year and a half, have really been confined to the school or their four walls. And, you know, they need an opportunity to see the world around them and from different points of view and different perspectives. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to show. I know, Trish, that there's even some more text that you can add to it to enhance our projects a little bit more. So what were you thinking? Could we maybe draw a line? You could show us how to draw a line. A hundred percent. You know, I, absolutely. You know, and that, there's so many tech things. A couple of things in here, we can share these directly to our Google Classrooms. Even just building this ongoing with our students. So we've, we've covered a part in our textbook we've added to the project. So not waiting till the project at the end to do this. But when you go back to that new feature, um, button on the left hand side it does give you more options than just place mark and one of my favorite ones is the draw a line or a shape how often in you know when you and i were in school sam we were given those black line masters and we had to draw a region and color it in and we we're always kind of coloring in those maps we can recreate that in an interactive way and so when i click the new feature and the line i select a starting point and it's just click it's just clicking and dragging like a dot to dot. So you click your line, so click on your map wherever you want there and to be able to start your starting point. And then you start to drag that around. And so eventually just click a few of those places. We can draw a straight line. So that's great for migratory journeys, journeys of a character, but we can also create regions. And what's lovely is it treats it as an item in the project just like a place. So I can still add a photo. I can still add a description. Um, I can still put all of that information that would have been from a place right here in this particular region. And so I can start to talk about this is a region of particular industry. This is where fishing is going to be happening. And this is the primary source of income for this portion of the, the, the community. Whatever that is, I can add that. Now, what I love about this, Sam, if you scroll down, because we know we have info boxes and we've got those images. One of the things we can do is we can actually change the outline and fill color and the opacity of our shapes. So I like this for a couple of ways where I can say, okay, I want to be able to, you know, I can change that color if I want, but I love the fill color that's sitting at 25% right now. You can pump that up. I'll even do guess, guessing games with students. I'll cover it in completely 100% so it's solid. And then it's like, what do we think is behind this? Using our clues, what would I find in this area? And then you can reveal it or we can. So there's there's just so much. There's even the, the mathematics of being able to have area and perimeter that are around these shapes that, that are set for us to recreate it. So our tours are, are not only places, but it can give us that that region information that we that we need inside of social studies. Yeah, and I loved even when you were saying about um, creating the fill here, because right away when you were saying that, like, it'd be great as you kind of have those discussions with kids to even slowly reveal, yeah. introduce it one by one as they're getting closer and closer. And I just think that again, so if I'm talking about, let's say the coastal region, and I want to talk about fishing and things like that as a natural resource and as a form of income um, and revenue for the, for the region, I can kind of enhance it that way. And I think that that is so much fun. So I'm glad that even you showed me that and I've learned something new today. That's great. I love it. So the last little piece, if you click your back button to get out of your actual editor of your project, just so you see your list of projects, just remember they're very, very easy to be able to share and be able to, to, to put with our students. Whenever you have a project, one of the things that you can do, you go easily back into it. Um, you're going to be able to share that with people, with collaborators, but also get the link to your, your fi final project just so that you can put that in your Google Classroom. And so you're going to want to make sure that you change that from restricted to ECSD. But now you can share this with your students directly in the Google Classroom and they can see it and return to it every time an addition has been made. They're going to see it finished on their end. So such a great way just to be able to, to bring learning to life. Thank you for showing us this. I think as teachers, we're always looking for new ways for engagement but really the ultimate goal is that deep understanding from our students and i think i'm most excited for your next video where we're going to show some things that students can create 
Yeah, I love the um, the creation part of this as, as a resource for our students. They can create within it, and then they're really going to be able to dive into that transfer of learning. And then as teachers, we can see how that transfer really allows us to assign a level of achievement, right? To look at our levels of achievement and what m is my student producing in this opportunity for transfer. So I know we're constantly looking for opportunities, especially in social studies. Where can I allow my students to transfer? I have to think of you know current events or new solutions or new situations for them. But this time, you're just going to plop them into the map and see how they can transfer all of this information. So it's going to be really exciting, and I look forward to the next video. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sam. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in our next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.